all the time. And the energies of these times are, are sort of unplugging us from the old paradigm. And whether we choose to unplug ourselves or whether society starts having greater and greater difficulties on the economic level, that certainly will unplug people from the paradigm on one level because they will have to become more autonomous, more clever, you know, um, more innovative in, in how they deal with the world and how they re, you know, reuse their resources and recycle and, and become, you know, like clever, as I said, mm -hmm. you know. Go back to their own. Hay poca información sobre Bárbara Marciniak y solo he podido encontrar una entrevista. Lo poco que se puede encontrar sobre Bárbara Marciniak es que es una canalizadora conocida por su recepción de material de entidades que dicen ser pleyadianos. Marciniak cuenta que el 18 de mayo de 1988 lo que describe como un colectivo de las pleyades comenzó a comunicarse telepáticamente con ella. Cuenta que estaba en un viaje con un grupo de amigos en ese momento, visitando lugares de poder antiguos en Egipto y Grecia. Sintió entonces interiormente que la llevaron a reexperimentar estos sitios como parte de su vida actual. Estaba en Grecia cuando recibió la primera canalización de los pleyadianos. El contacto de Marcinia con los pleyadianos fue uno de los primeros contactos independientes después de Billy Meyer, la primera publicación significativa de material pleyadiano canalizado posterior a Meyer, fue producido por Barbara Han Clow y fue a la editorial de esta que Marciniak recurrió para publicar su primer libro, titulado Mensajeros del Alba, Enseñanzas de los Pleiadianos, lanzado en el año 1992. Entonces se convirtió en uno de los volúmenes más importantes de los Pleiadianos, seguido de dos libros posteriores con el mismo editor. A través de Marciniak, los Pleiadianos dijeron que habían llegado a las Pleiadianos desde otro universo que se había completado y que los terrícolas estamos pasando por un fin de era de oscuridad a otro de luz y que ellos estaban aquí para ayudarnos a hacer ese cambio. Además, según los pleyadianos, la humanidad fue planeada como un experimento del creador principal, de la fuente original, que envió extensiones de sí misma a lo desconocido con la orden de crear formas de vida. Estas extensiones, dioses creadores, comenzaron a crear nuevas jerarquías, extensiones adicionales. Finalmente se desarrolló un plan para crear la Tierra. Los genetistas tomaron ADN de muchas especies para producir la raza humana. A partir de estas observaciones primarias, los pleyadianos han ofrecido una visión alternativa del significado y el propósito de la vida humana. Lo más destacable de la información de estas entidades es que ya en los años 80 avisaban de la manipulación del planeta por parte de los arcontes, que se alimentan del sufrimiento y del miedo de los seres vivos, de las esencias vitales, y cómo empoderarnos para salir de la matrix arconte que han creado los oscuros. Es por estas advertencias que se puede ver que el mensaje es real. En su época, en los 80, todos los mensajes nueva era se basaban en el amor, la luz, los maestros ascendidos, pero nunca avisaban sobre quiénes controlan realmente el planeta. Es por eso que su libro Mensajeros del Alba fue una revelación importante. A continuación, Bárbara Marciniak habla sobre la importancia del sol y la activación del ADN y la salud y cómo existe una manipulación para que piense la humanidad que el sol es un peligro para la humanidad. My opinion to um, turn people against the sun. Yes, absolutely. No I was hoping about we'd talk about that. And and yet, it's our source of light. It's our source of health. It's also our source of energy and information, because it's not just warming us and, 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 and allowing food food to grow and the whole earth to blossom. It's also transmissions of information, and I think that's what the ancients knew. And there's stories, you know. In, in history that talk about people who, when they wanted to have covert activities, they would always do it at night. And they wouldn't do it in the light of day because the sun would then know and then the sun would transmit that information. And so we came up with that expression, you know, doing things in the dark and keeping it secret. And, and so there's a lot of truth in, in sort of just, you know, casual mm -hmm. expressions and, and casual things that we know. And it's the time to, to bring all that into focus and realize these things are really, really important. Yeah. And so I think a way to health 
is to spend, you know, a number of 20 minutes, a couple of hours in the sun every day, glancing at the sun, acknowledging the sun, realizing that those rays not only provide vitamin D and sustain our body and blood and bones, but they're giving us information. And that information travels on, on light rays. And it's so important. And it's a two-way thing. We can communicate with the sun and just express our feelings or, or whatever. But there's, it, it's, not, it's not like worshiping God or anything like that. I think that my concepts of create, creator and source and all that, they're so large that I can't define it into a god, so to speak, right. especially a male god. Right. Because how can, you know, there's always the female component, and that's really another thing that's vastly missing from our planet, is that women are awakening, and unfortunately, so many women think they have to awaken into this feminism that turns them into men. And they lose their beauty, and they lose the whole idea of producing beauty and, and embodying life and protecting life. When I think a part of a woman's role is to really take on that goddess energy, yes. and to embody it, and to value life, and to use the intuition right. and, to, and to really make a stance in society about establishing beauty and fairness and that all life is honored. And that's what's coming back. It know? is coming back and also with great resistance. Here you have ever more expanding technology, very male oriented in its expression and also in its design. And yet it affects all of us because now we're all becoming dependent on those technologies. Exactly. And, I was and now we're cut away from the sun even more. Right. How do you see that technological interface as the feminine really needs to show itself? For myself, you know, I haven't, I stopped watching TV in the early 70s, and so it was 35 years ago, and it was a choice, it was a choice, because I felt back then, even, that television was doing something to my mind, and that's why I stopped. I said, I'm not going to waste my time, for you. you know, watching these things. So I do very minimal technology. I don't use my dishwasher, I don't, I don't use a microwave, even though they came with the house, they just sit there unused, you know, really low tech. I use the computer for you know very few things. I have to do some of my work on it. I do a newsletter when I write books and setting up events and something through email. But it's not something I look to to jump into every day because to me, I can't wait to go outside. Yeah. You know, I live in a beautiful place. I, I purposely picked a place where I had land, enough to manage, you know, enough to enjoy and garden and have campfires in my backyard and sweat lodges and parties on my deck and. And that's how I socialize. I, I really take people and myself out in nature. So it really comes down to a choice. It does. Nonetheless, if you look at the really large scale, you're talking about children in particular being totally indoctrinated into the use of technology. And I was noticing even in, the, in you go to a, a movie now in a theater, and you'll have, unlike even a few months ago, certainly a year ago, you got your ad to you know join up with Uncle Sam. First of all, it's your recruitment ad, followed by a, let's buy this really violent, Sam, nasty video movies, game right? for <laughs> Christmas or for the holiday season, Hanukkah, for your children. It's followed up with the very thing that's going to program them. Well, these are all programmings, and the important thing about any visual art, okay, anything that we start choosing to, you know, turn on and watch for entertainment, the brain, our brain waves change, and they immediately drop from, you know, a conscious state into a very unconscious state. And people do that because they don't know how to relax anymore. Mm -hmm. they don't, and no one's talking about anything meaningful, so they don't know how to, like, discourse or just have fun without, you know, in, in deep inebriation or something like that. So it really comes down to people really getting consciously aware, making a choice. Um, you know, the pictures that are put before us are, are like living dreams. And they're forms of program. And, and so those pictures go in our brains, and then we think that's reality. And especially when it's children, the nervous system of a child is not mature enough to handle the rapidity of the data that is coming through. And they think that the speed up of, of, of games and, and violence and how fast everything goes and how little it is, even though it's entertaining, mm -hmm. what's happening is, is that it's shutting down the perception. So that when you see people looking at some little device and the picture's this big, I have a bunch of nephews, and when they were really little, I'd walk into the living room, you know, instead of them being yelling and screaming like sometimes they would be and having a great old time, which would drive people crazy, but they were playing, they'd be quiet, totally quiet, and they'd look around and say, what are you guys doing? And they're all in a trance with a little thing this big, I guess they're called Game Boys. Mm -hmm. I never had kids, so I don't know. And they're pushing these little buttons, looking at these little pictures, and they're totally in a trance. They're in trance, totally. Totally yeah. in a trance, because their brain waves yes. shift. And you, they really have to shift to go down to force your perceptions, which are out here, to go down to this little thing and stay there for hours and push these little things. What it's really doing is that they don't, they can't see anything anymore. Then they come out and then they're hyperactive because too much data has come in too fast and their nervous systems are not developed to handle that until children reach, you know, there's these cycles in every seven years, it's the Saturn cycle. So until children are seven, they really need no media at all. None, absolutely none, 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 Play none, with none, the fairies none, and the trees. Yeah. They need to, to be shown that nature is safe, mm -hmm. that you don't have to...